Good morning, scholar. How was your night? I hope it was fine. Even if it was not fine, that's your problem. I don't care. Uh, and then my voice, I have cut that so on me on the jacket. Oh. Um, moment distribution method of analysis of um, flexural elements. You know, flexural elements, they are horizontal elements. Any element that can bend is called a flexural element. So we have slab and we have beam. And you know, those are the horizontal elements. So, and th that's the um, kind of element that we can use moment distribution method to make um, its analysis. It is also called adi cross method because the the scientist that be the engineer that developed this method is called across so yeah first of all we have to make some definitions there are some terms that we have to define because if you don't know these terms you will not be able to undo um this method but in order to now um understand this definition i try to sketch up um two beams this beam i call it beam one and this other beam i call it beam two beam one is a propped cantilever beam because it is propped cantilever it is propped at this end and this is a simply supported beam so for this beam one there's an externally applied load at a i call it m for this other beam there is an externally applied load as well i call it m too if you see this um this moment you can see that i drew it with a pencil you understand i didn't write it with a barrel or like on like this you can see this is a black pen but this is just a pencil. It is not an externally applied load. It is just a load that is induced. It is just a moment, Jerry. It's just a moment that is occurring at this point due to the application of this moment that is applied at A. Do you understand? It is a moment. This MB here, that is moment at B, is the moment due to the moment applied at M. So the only moment we apply here is M. As well as this, the only moment we apply here is M. So this MBA is the moment resulting due to the moment applied at M. So for beam one, I want to make a little bit of analysis before I define this. Um, before I define the terms that I want to define. So for beam one, I said M at A, that is moment at A, which is MAB, is equal to two EI over here, two theta A plus theta B plus FEMAB. Of course, you'll have seen this. Um, equation before it is called the slope deflection equation because whenever i want to deal with something that has to do with fixed end moment um you have to you don't you don't have any choice you just have to talk about slope deflection um equation so deflection equation is the first equation that um is the first equation of um kinematic indeterminacy that has to do with um, fixed end moment so you have to talk about fixed end moment so now here m a b that is this moment this moment m is the same thing as MAB, all right. This moment M is the same as MAB. So that MAB, this externally applied moment, you know, I don't know the value. I just know that when I apply a load, when I apply a moment, I mean at this M, I know there will be a rotation at that point due to the what due to that um, externally applied moment. Here there will be no rotation because it is um, a fixed support. So here, when I applied another moment M, there will be a rotation here too. There will also be a rotation here too, yeah. But the value of this rotation, I don't know it. Because the value of this moment, also, I don't know it. You understand? So the value of this moment, that's what I'm now looking for now. So that's why I want to make this analysis. So I say MAB equals to 2 here over this, blah, 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 blah. Then the fixed end moment is equal to 0 because there is no external load. You know, when we have external load, that's when you can have um, fixed end moment. And theta B is equal to 0. I'm talking about beam 1. Theta B is equal to 0 because there will be no rotation for fixed support. So therefore, the equation reduced to MAB is equal to 4EIL theta A. That means the value of this externally applied load, this externally applied load M is what? 4EIL theta A. Alright, so we are done with um, beam 1. Then for beam 2, for beam 2, oh, it skipped my mind. I did not do the analysis for the uh, beam 2. But for beam 2, you can see it is um, inched inch. So that means we cannot just use um, this um, slope deflection method because here we shouldn't be talking about the um, kinematic indeterminacy. We should be so concerned about the static indeterminacy, right? So if you want to use the kinematic indeterminacy, that means you have to use the modified slope deflection equation. I believe you know the um, modified slope deflection equation. Let me let me even write it. Ah, here's my pen. Where I go before? Uh -huh. So I'll just write it. Ah, uh, you the Chris, ni?
Waiting the call now. Aha. Uh -huh. So the modified slope diversion equation is no for this beam. For this beam. For this beam. So this M, this is only applied M, which is M E B. Let me write this as M. Or let me say M E B. M E B will be equals to three E I. You know, I'm not interested in proving the formula. I just want to write the uh, modified slope um, deflection equation. So that's what I'm just doing. I'm not, I'm not proving it. Me, I'm not proving it. Theta e plus f e m. You know, I told you I don't have uh, resources for writing, so this is just uh, I'm just using my touch part, so that's why it is very slow like this. Assuming my system is a touch screen now, you understand? I'll have written it with um, a stylus pen, just with my um, handwriting, normal, normal. But since I'm using my touch part, that's why it's very slow like this. So, what money do you on? Abi Obinoni, EDVX? Okay, so. Aha. So F E M A B over two. <coughs> so for this, so for this beam now, this beam two, the externally applied moment M, which is something as M A B because this is point A. And this is point B. The value of that M, if I'm using slope, uh, modified slope deflection equation method, the value is MAB equals to 3EI over L, open bracket theta A plus FEM BA minus FEM AB over 2. You understand? So that's the formula for um, the slope, uh, the modified slope deflection equation. You use modified slope deflection equation when you have inch inch. You understand? But you use um slope deflection equation when you have fixed inch, fixed, 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 whatever, whatever. You understand? So, but here as well, since we don't have um, since we don't have an externally applied load, that means there will be no fixed end moment. So fixed end moment we will be out of the way. So we'll be left with what? We'll be left with m maybe is equal to three e i over l multiplied by theta e. You understand? So this is the value for mab for the second moment you understand i should have written it here but it skipped my mind when i was compiling this so this is mab for beam a and this is mab for beam two you understand so i will use it i will use it now <coughs> so after that now we can now go to the the definition of the terms right now so now the first time we have here is bending stiffness coefficient which is represented as k bar bending stiffness coefficient as I said, this is the moment applied at the end of a member that will cause a unit rotation of that member so if you see the moment we applied here is m the external applied moment m so we call it external applied moment m and this moment m will cause a rotation we don't know the value of that rotation so it is m and it is theta whatever so we we'll just call it theta so if this theta is equal to one you know theta can be one it can be two it can be whatsoever so if this theta is one that means the value of this m we apply here is what k or k bar i mean it is k bar so k bar simply means when this m will give us theta equals to one you understand this m we cause a particular value of theta but if the value of theta that we are that it is causing is um one so that means the value of this m is um is k so we can just say okay m a b will be equals to k bar if theta a equals to one you understand so and uh, you know the value of m a b before the value of m a b is what four e i l theta a 
So you know, at the time is now equals to one. So you just place it one k bar. So that means your k bar is equal to what four e i over here. So that's the um, that's the definition of bending stiffness coefficient, and that's four e i over here. So from modified slope deflection method, I want to define. I want to find the value of um, k bar for the second beam. You know, this is the value for k bar for the first beam, which is what the probed cantilever when the far end is fixed. You understand? So for the mod, um, modified slope deflection method, which is the second beam, our theta, our m is equal to 3 ei over l theta, like we said it the other time, theta a. So our m equals to k bar if theta is equal to 1 ab so the same thing you do the same thing here k bar is equal to 3 i over l so this is the value for k bar that is case 2 which is beam 2 so that's that so we are done with the definition of bending stiffness so the second term here is relative stiffness k this is the um this is the k that we usually use in Analysis. This is the, when you have stiffness, stiffness, stiffness. This is the stiffness you are talking about. It is not the above stiffness. So this is the quarter of bending stiffness, and it is used for the analysis. So when you divide um, bending stiffness, when you divide it by four, the value is called relative stiffness. So for the first case, that is when phi end is fixed. The first case, which is the first beam. So the relative stiffness got what? Bending stiffness over 4. What's the value of that one? 4 EI over L. If you divide by 4, you have what? EI over L. For the second case, which is um, simply supported when the far end is inched. Okay? So K is equal to K by 4. And the value of that K by is what? 3 EI over L. So when you divide it by 4, you have 3 over 4 EI over L. So this is the value for K when, your, when the far end is what? Fixed. This is the value for k when the far end is inched. So we are we've defined two terms now. So I just rewrite it here. So the third one now is now carryover moment. Carryover moment. Is it carryover moment? This is the moment developed at end B as a result of the rotation that occurred at end A when M is applied at A. You know, when I was talking about um, this beam, you see, I said I drew it with um, pencil so that you know that it is not an externally applied load, but it is a load that is resulting in this MB at this end B due to the externally applied moment ME. I mean, whatever this moment shall this moment at A. Aha. So this MBA is called the carryover moment. You understand? Because we apply moment at M, and that moment is having an effect even at M at end B. So this moment that is resulting at end B due to the externally applied moment MA is called carryover moment. You understand because this M has carried over a moment to end B. This other moment has carried a moment to end B. Yeah. So this moment at this point is called carry over moment. Okay. Okay. So for beam one, which is a propped cantilever when the far end is fixed, Abby. So MBA, which is a carry over moment, is equal to two E I over here. 2 theta b plus theta a plus fem you you shall know this this is um um stiffness um bending what am i even saying now this is the slope deflection equation uh -huh. so you should know that your fixed element is equal to zero of course and theta b is equal to <coughs> is zero so when you input these two values here your carry moment will reduce to 2 ei over here or theta here I believe you know what I mean by carry moment. Carry moment is the same as MBA. You understand? You know MAB is the externally applied load. MBA is the carryover moment. So that's why I'm just inserting carryover moment straight here. Instead of writing MBE is equal to 2 EI. So I just ignored 
MBA and I started with CUM, which is carryover moment. You understand? So this equation will reduce to this carryover moment is equal to 2e i over here multiplied by theta a. And as proved earlier, we said moment applied at a is equal to 4e i over here theta a. So from here, if you make um so we said m a is equal to 4 uh, theta a does that. so if you now make theta a the subject of the formula theta a will give you m a l over 4 e i so this theta a you now have to substitute it into this carryover um, moment equation so you now have carryover moment equation is equal to 2 e i over l theta a so when you substitute this theta a inside this you have c o m is equal to 2 e i over l open bracket this theta e will not write it as theta e again, just write it as m e l over 4 e i. Then this we cancel out this, l will cancel out this 2 e 1, 2 e 2. Then at the end of the day, you have carry over is equal to what m e over 2. You understand? So it means that okay, for this first beam, you know, this analysis that we made is for the first beam, it's not for the second beam. You understand? It's for the first beam. You say okay, now the first beam, your carry over moment to be equal to what moment a over two what is moment a moment a is the moment applied at end a you understand this is m a this is the moment applied at end a and this is the moment that is being carried over so we now said okay then after that we now said okay carry over moment is equal to m over two meaning the moment that is carried to this point will be equal to what half of this point you understand so if the far end is inched you know this is our reference point then the far end is what fixed so if the far end is fixed that means the moment that will be carried over to that fixed end is what is half of that externally applied load you understand so that's that but for case two we don't need to even do the analysis because we know that okay this is a uh, is a inch support and the moment at inch support or ruler support is always equal to what always equals to zero you understand you know here we just applied an externally applied um we just applied an external load why am i mentioning load we just applied um an external moment you understand so this is an external moment so even though we applied an external moment the moment at this point will still be zero because it is what it is a in support so there will be no moment carried over to this point so that's why i said mb is equal to zero from the beginning i've written it as mb is equal to is zero so that means the carryover moment is what is zero so you don't carry any moment to inch support but you have to carry a moment to fixed support and the value will be what half of that moment that you are carrying so if you have 50 moments i want to carry it over to a support it will be half if that support you want to carry it to if that support you want to carry it to is a is a fixed support but if it is a ruler support or a inch support you don't carry anything you understand so we are done with carry moment as well so we now move to distribution factor so i said since m a b is equal to zero for beam two Record that summation of moments equals to zero at inch support. Therefore, okay. So distribution factor. Distribution factor has to do with joint. This is the factor that determines the amount of moment that will be carried over to another joint. So look at it now. This is a uh, joint B. So and there's a moment here. We now want to carry over. Uh, if you want to carry a moment to this joint A, you want to carry over another moment to this joint D, you also want to carry another moment to this joint C. Now, the problem is, how will I distribute this moment? You understand? How will I distribute it? Oh, in this moment, you know, it has to be zero. This is what I'm talking about. You know, when you have, um, this is one member, member AB, you have another member BD, you have another member BC. I know that if you split up this um, member, you have MBA, you have MBD, you have MBC. Then we want to write the static equation, the static um, equilibrium equation for this. 
MBE plus MBC plus MBD will be equals to zero. You understand? Because it is not a fixed support. It will not have any moment. The moment will be equals to zero. So now you now want to know the value of the moment that will go here. The value of the moment that will go here. The value of the moment that will go here. So how do you do that? You should apply. There will be a factor that will determine how you have to distribute the moment. You understand? Assuming the externally applied moment here is um, 50. You understand? Assuming the externally applied moment here is 50. So it's not determined. How will you now distribute that everything now becomes zero? Maybe the moment that will be here will be 25. The moment that will be here will be minus 50. The moment that will come here will also be 25. So at the end of the one, you say minus 50 plus 25 plus 25, you have zero. But how do you know if this is minus 50? How will you know if this is 25? How will you know if this is 25? There should be a factor that will enable you to distribute this um, moment. So that factor is called distribution factor. And the formula for it is um, KBA. So if you want to calculate for KBA now, this member, KBA. So KBA will give you KBA plus KBC plus KBD. So this is the formula for distribution factor. I know you, you know, even know this, of course. So, and K, K has to do with every member. So if you want to calculate K, you know, there are three members here. We have member AB, we have member BD, we have member BC. So when you're calculating um, your stiffness, which is K, that we've discussed above, you have to calculate for each member. You calculate for AB, you calculate for BD, you calculate for BC, one by one. So we are done now. So we now go to the analysis in proper now. So this is the first example. Example one. Now look at it. This is uh, a fixed support. We have a ruler support here. We have a ruler support here, and we have a fixed support here. And the method we are using is moment distribution method, of course. So the instruction given is that E I is constant. So the distributed load here is 1.5. Blah blah blah. So the first step to do is what you calculate the fixed end moment. You calculate the fixed end moment. <laughs> so you know I told you I have cut that. Hmm. So the first thing is to calculate the fixed end moment. So you calculate the fixed end moment AB. That will be W square over 12. Pa, 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 you have 50 um, keep feet. F U M B here that will be equal to minus 50 keep feet. I believe you understand this. This is um, because we are assuming everything to be in what anti-clockwise. So if it is anti-clockwise, it is positive. If it is clockwise, it should be negative. If you are confused, check your fixed moment equation table. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So for member B C now, we have F E M B C. That's P L over eight. Blah blah blah. This is the value. F E M C B. That will be negative of these two. You have that. Then for member C D, there's no moment, so the uh, there's no externally applied load, there's no load, so the the fixed end moment will be close to what zero. So that's the first step. So the second step will be to calculate the relative um, stiffness, relative stiffness K, which I told you that that's what we use in analysis. We don't use bending stiffness, we use the relative stiffness, and we've derived it before that it is what one over L. If it is if the far end is fixed but if the far end is what inched it is what three over four l so here it is what fixed so we have one over l come and confirm it if it is fixed or not if you want to confirm if you want to calculate the relative stiffness of any member you will not start from the end never start from the end never start from the end you will start from the center you understand from the joints at the inner joint then you now relate it outside do you understand? So it will be KBA. It will not be KAB. Because if you are saying KAB, you, you now stand here. They will not be looking at this one. Is this one fixed or roller? You understand? So if you have any problem like that. But just come inside. They say, okay, what is KBA? Obviously, this is roller B. They will not look at it. They find this word fixed. So the K would be what? 1 over L. So you compute it. 1 over L. And our L is 20. So 1 over 20 we give you... Um, so KB is 1 over 20. Then let's calculate KBC as well. Now KBC. KBC. You know BC. Is this 
um, ruler or fixed. It is not a ruler. It is fixed. Because, we, you know, when we are writing the... Of course, when you are even doing the analysis or uh, the design of something, when you have a continuous beam or a continuous slab, yeah, that's continuous. When you have fixed support, that fixed... Um, this um, sign is telling you that it is continuous to another side. You understand? So here that we have a continuous... A continuous um, beam. This ruler is telling you that this um, beam is still... Um, it is still continuous. So this point, you'll not be seeing it as a ruler because that's not the end. As mean it is the end now, you'll be seeing it as ruler. But since it is not the end, you'll be seeing it as what? As a fixed support. Because even when you want to write the fixed end moment, you fixed it. If you do not fix it, you cannot get this value for fixed end moment. So this um, support, you'll not be seeing it as ruler, you'll be seeing it as what? As fixed. Since the beam is still what? It's still continuous. But when this is the end of the beam, you'll be seeing it as what? Ruler. But if the beam is still continuous, it is not what? It is not a ruler, it is a fixed. So that means KBC is also what? Far end is what? Fixed. You understand? You will not say far end is what? Ruler. Far end is what? Fixed. So that will also give us 1 over L. Then KCD, of course, it is fixed. This is obvious. So that's 1 over 15. So that's um, 1 over 15. So we are done with the relative stiffness. They will now go to what? Distribution factor. This is the formula for distribution factor for KBA. KBA plus this 0 0.5. Then the total distribution factor at every joint must be equal to 1. So instead of writing another distribution factor formula again, I will just write 1 minus this one because I know these are the same joints, you know, BA, BC, they are the same joints, you understand? So I'll just say, okay, since this one gave me 0 0.5, 1 minus 0 0.5, I also have 0 0.5, you understand? Then let me tell you, let me tell you something. You see this fixed support? Fixed support is a very selfish support. It is very selfish. It can take moments, but it will never give moments. You understand? Fixed support will never give moment, but it will take moment. So that is why this um, joint B, it will have a distribution factor because it will distribute to this point. It will give to this point. But this joint A will never have a distribution factor because it is not ready to give. So it will not distribute. Someone that is not ready to distribute definitely cannot have a distribution factor. Distribution factor for a fixed support is always zero. So it will not distribute. It will take, but it will not give. You understand? So that means joint A and joint D, we don't even need to calculate the distribution factor. The distribution factor is what? Zero. Because they are what? They are selfish. So we just have to calculate the distribution factor for joint B and joint C. So that means we have four distribution factor. That is BA, BC, CB, CD. You understand? You know, at this joint, it will want to distribute to this fixed. This point, it also want to distribute to this roller. This C, we also want to distribute to this guy. This C, we also want to distribute to this guy. But D, we never distribute to C because it is a selfish um, joint. This A, we know what distribute to this one too because it is a selfish joint. So we have to calculate four distribution factors. Aha, uh -huh. so distribution factor CB, also cap this is the formula. So we calculate that it will give you 0 0.429. Instead of writing this formula again, just a 1 minus that, since it's the same joint. So you have 0 0.571. So we are done with the distribution factor as well. So the next thing to do now is to what? Start distributing. So now we shall, we shall start distributing now. So this is the support. So you draw a line downward, blam, from here to blam, blam, blam. So now, the distribution factor of this point is what? Is zero. I intentionally wrote it there so that you know. Some people will not even write it at all. So if they don't write it, you know it's zero. But I, do, I want you to write it so that you know that ah, this joint is a selfish point. It will never distribute. So this point, we've calculated it. It gives us 0 0.5. You can see why I have a DF, which is distribution factor. So right now, it means all this point here, what we have here is distribution factor. So... BC this is 0.5, this is 0.429, this is 0 0.571. Zero. And after that, you now write the fixed end moment. 
So the fixed element we've calculated it, we got 50 for this point, minus 50 for this point, 75 for this point, minus 75 for this point, because there is no load at this point at all, we have 0, 0. So now, whenever you have a moment, you have to balance that moment. When you have a moment, you have to do what? Balance that moment. And how do you balance? You balance, first of all, by changing the sign of that moment, then you now multiply it by the distribution factor. That's how to balance. There are two steps to it. First of all, you change the sign. Are we together? First of all, you change the sign. After changing the sign, you will now multiply it by the distribution factor. Now, so minus 50 plus 75. That will give us what? 25. Now, you now change the sign. If you now change the sign, it will now become what? Minus 25. So minus 25 multiplied by 0 0.5, you have minus 12.5. Minus 25 multiplied by 0 0.5, you have minus 12.5. I believe we are together. We are working with these joints. You know, if I'm writing it directly, that will, that will be very simple. But since I know you have the idea, so you won't, you have much problem with this. So minus 50 plus 75, this is the moment at this point. You sum the two together. Minus 50 plus 75, that will give you 25. Then this 25, we now want to split it into two <coughs> but before doing that you first of all change the sign so it will give you minus 25 now you now multiply that minus 25 with this 0 0.5 it will give you minus 12.5 that minus 25 that we got we still multiply by this distribution factor to know what we have here it also give us minus 12.5 so we balance this joint we move to the next joint now so here minus 75 plus 0 it will give us minus 75 change the sign is to give you 75 75 multiplied by 0 0.429 we have this 75 multiplied by 0 0.571 we have this also here the fixed element here is what is zero change the sign you have what minus zero minus zero multiplied by the distribution factor which is zero minus zero times zero you still have zero so that's why i think zero here zero this is also point this um other point two is zero you understand because this is 50 when you change the sign you have minus 50 Minus 50 multiplied by the distribution factor is 0. So this will also be 0. So after balancing it, you now carry over the moment. As you know, um, this point, as we said, we said it will distribute. When we say it will distribute, we mean it will carry another moment over. It will carry it over to another point. It will give other points. You know? Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right, sir. <coughs> so it means it will carry over to this point. So, and what value will it carry over? M over 2. Half. You know, we've calculated that from the beginning. Half. Because the far end is what? Fixed. You understand? So, if you, what is the half of 12.5? That's minus 6.25. This other point we also carry over half. You know, I told you you'll be seeing this as fixed. You'll not be seeing it as ruler. You know, I mentioned it before. So it will distribute to it. So it also carry over half. So when it's carry over half, it will give us minus 6.25. This we also carry over half. This will be 16.1. This we also carry over, it will be what? 21.4. You understand? So after the moment, you have to what? balance again. Moment, balance, moment, balance, moment, balance, moment, balance. That's the step. So after you've carried over, you now have to balance again. How do you balance? Change the sign, multiply by distribution factor. So when you change the sign of 6.25, it will give you... Sorry, when you change the sign of minus 6.25, it will give you 6.25, multiply by 0, 0. So this side too, you have 16.1 plus 0. You know there's nothing here. That means it is 0. You know, as I said... A fix will never carry over. Even if this, if this wants to carry over, it is zero. So there's nothing to carry over. So 16.1 plus this place that is um, dash, which is, means um, zero. So it's zero plus 16.1, that's 16.1. First of all, you change the sign. So you have minus 16.1. Minus 16.1 multiplied by 0 0.5, you have minus 8.5. Minus 16.5. Minus 16.1 multiplied by 0 0.5, you also have minus 8.5. Come to this side as well. You balance it, blah, blah, blah. Now, this side too. 
me for my you've gotten it. So the carry over moment, here you also carry over moment, here you also carry over moment, carry over moment, you carry over moment. Be careful, you don't carry from you don't carry from fixed. You can see that if you look at this side, look at this side. If you look at this side, which is this side, you see there's nothing, we are not carrying any over, we are not carrying any moment over to this side. You are not carrying from fixed. You cannot carry from fixed to another support. No. It can only collect. It will just be taking moment. They can carry over to it, but you never carry over to any support. You understand? <coughs> so you keep doing that. You keep you keep balancing. Keep carrying over. Keep balancing. Keep carrying over. Once you get to a point that it is very small, like it's 0, 0.0. Mm -hmm. So you have to do it. So when you get to that point, you just sum everything up. But you will not stop at carrying over. You stop at balancing. You understand? You know we are balancing, carry over, balancing, carry over, balancing, carry over. So you don't stop at carry over. You stop at what? Balance. Okay? So here, so since we have 0.036, it is now small. So I decided to stop here. Because if you still, because look at it. If I carry half of this one again, imagine carrying half of 0.036. That would be 0.0 something, you know? It is now small. So I can stop here. So you now sum it everything. You sum everything together. So you have 50. You will not sum the distribution factor. The distribution factor is just a factor. It is not the moment. So 50 minus 6.25 minus 4.03 minus 0 0.335 minus 0 0.215. When you add everything together, you have plus 39.2. That means the moment at this point is what? 39.2, which is MEB. Now, for MBA too, add everything. Minus 50, minus 12.5, minus 8.05, minus 0 0.67, minus 0 0.43, minus 0 0.036, you have minus 71.7. Add everything here too, blah, 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 blah. Add everything here too, you have 71.7. Um, but all you have to watch out here is this value and this value, they must be equal to zero. So when you add them, minus this uh, plus this, you have zero. Because you know that what you are seeing here, originally, what you are seeing here is the ruler support. And in the ruler support, you don't have moments. The summation of moments should be equal to zero. You understand? So when you now split it into two, you can have minus something here, plus something here. So at the end of the way, when you add it together, it will give you what? Zero. You understand? So this same side as well, you add everything together. Minus 49 plus 49. And here you have plus 224.4 so everything is in what kilonewton meter so that's how to do the moment so you can just draw it out and you draw the moment so since you've known the moment how to calculate the the reaction will be simple then if you want to draw the moment distribution sorry if you want to draw the bending moment diagram or the shear force diagram it should be easy like that since you've gotten the moment and the and the reaction so that's all for equation one Now for question one so on to the next, on to the next, we go to question two. So example two, we have a fixed support here, we have a roller support here, and we have a roller support here. Now, you know, if you want to treat this place, you'll be treating it as fixed because it is still continuous. But here, you'll not be treating it as fixed because it is not continuous. That is why I chose this question. You know that one? We have um, fixed at the other end. So here, this point should not be treating it as what? As fixed because it is not continuous. But here, you'll be treating it as fixed because it is what? Continuous. If you want to carry over moment from this point, if you want to carry over a moment to point A, it will be half because this point is what? Fixed. If you want to carry over a moment from B to C, it will be what? It's zero because you don't carry moment to what? Ruler or inch. You understand? But the problem here is that E is constant, I is not constant. So you have to be careful. E is constant, but I is not constant. So for this pan AB, the I is 1.5 I. Um, for this span BC, the I is, one, is I. So we move to the calculation. So the solution, the first step is what? Fix the moment. You know how to do that. Fix the moment AB, PL over 8, blah, 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 100. B A that will be negative of it. F E M B C is got to minus F E M C B, which will be right, 50. 
You understand what I mean by this now? That is if M FEMBC is equal to 50, FEMCB equals to minus 50. So after that, you now calculate the relative stiffness. The formula for relative stiffness is what? Over 5, 1.5 I over, over L. You know the high is 1.5. Show you grab that. You know the formula is I over L. I over L, which is similar as 1 I over L. So if our I is now 1.5, it's about 1.5 I over L. You understand? So you have 1.5 I over L, which is over 10. So that's your <coughs> that's your KBA. The one of KBC. KBC will now be 3 over 4 I over L. You know, we've done that from the beginning. Our relative stiffness. If it is what? If it is inch, you know, KBA defined is what fixed. KBA find is fixed, but KBC far end is inch. So when far end is inch, your relative stiffness formula is what three over four open bracket one over L. I be I over L, Jerry. Hmm? Okay. So if your I is constant, you can just cancel the I and say one over L. <coughs> so I over L, which is what, and our L is ten. So that's KBC. So you calculate the distribution factor. That's simple. For distribution factor B, you have two over three. Then distribution factor BC, you have one minus two over three. You have one over three. The distribution factor CB is one. Sorry, I forgot to. Um, okay, I don't need to go back. It is here. I forgot to explain it the other time. You know, I told you that fixed is very um, selfish. It will never distribute. So the distribution factor is what is zero. But for inch. Okay, I have even mentioned it. But for inch, the distribution factor is always equal to 1. So here it is 2 over 3. And here it is 1 over 3 as calculated above. But here you don't need to calculate it because it is only 1. It is not, um, it is just one member that is taken from it, which is what? Member B, C. So that means the total distribution factor here will be 1. Because we know that the submission of moments at this inch support or ruler support will be equal to 1. You understand? So just 1. But for here it is what? 0. So we've calculated the fixed end moment. So you input it as you as usual, hundred minus hundred fifty minus fifty. So we now do what to balance. How do you balance? Change the sign, multiply by distribution factor. So change the sign of hundred. You have minus hundred minus hundred multiply by zero. You have zero. Change the, uh, minus hundred plus fifty. You know here you have two. You know it is two something that is that you have to add here. You have to add B A and you have B C. Show you graph. So it will be minus 100 plus 50. So that will give you plus 50. Ah, sorry, that will give you minus 50. So when I change the sign of minus 50, it will become plus 50. So plus 50 multiplied by 2 over 3, you have 100 over 3. Plus 50 over and plus 50 when you multiply by 1 over 3, you also have 50 over 3. So this side as well, minus 50. When you change the minus, um, sign of minus 50, you have what? Plus 50. Plus 50 times 1, you have plus 50. Okay? So after balancing, the next thing is what? You carry over moments. So now, you don't have to carry over moments. You know, fix is um, always fixed. It. We never distribute, so we do not even talk to it. We just move to the next point, which is this point. We know this one, we never distribute, so ignore it. Come to this one that can distribute it. Already. So now, you can distribute. So what will you distribute to this side? Because this side is fixed, you distribute half of 100 over 3, which is 50 over 3. This side, can you distribute to this side? Yes, you can distribute. But this one will never collect it from you. You understand? Because I told you that roller um, will never receive moment. Because the summation of moment at that point, you know it will be zero. So we don't, it will not carry over, it will not collect from you. If, it, if the far end is roller, but if it is fixed, it will collect half. If it is ruler, it will never collect. So, if you now want to carry over moment to this side, it will not take it from you. So, that's why I print that it's zero here. I ought not to write anything here. I ought not to write everything here. But if I didn't write it, only my were confusing. But since I've written zero, you know that, okay, it did not carry anything to it. You understand? It can give, but it will not collect. You understand? The reason why we are giving to this roller, you know this roller because this sign is still continuous. That's why we, it can take. You know, when it is continuous, when I told you when it is continuous, it will be acting like um, fixed. Show you grab it will be acting like fixed. That's why we are able to um, carry half to this side. But this one is not continuous. That's the end. 
it is our end um, support. So you'll be treating it as ruler all the time. But here you'll not be treating it as ruler, you'll be treating it as a as a fixed. You understand? As a fixed. So here it will carry over half. So it will carry over 25 to this point. So after carrying over the next thing is to what is to balance. So when you balance this one, you have zero. When you balance this one, 25 plus zero, you have minus 25. You have 25, then when you change this and you have minus 25. Multiply by distribution factors, you have this. And also balance this, you have this. So the next thing is to what? Do the carry over. <coughs> so now you can carry over to fix Abby. Yes. So carry over to fix, which is half of this. So you have minus 25 over 3. This side, when you want to carry over, ah, it is the ruler again. You cannot carry over to it. It will not take anything from you. It can give, but it cannot take. So you have zero. But remember, this one you have zero before. So even if you want to carry over, you have to carry zero to it. You understand? Your moment is zero, so you have nothing left to carry over. So you can say you have zero here. So now we are done with the carry over. So here now to balance, balance one have zero. Zero plus zero plus zero zero. So here, this is the end point. Unlike the first example, the first example you can never arrive at zero. You understand? You can never arrive at zero. You just stop at the point where you know that oh, it is now small. Well, here, this is the end point. There's no, there's no more step for you to take again. This is the last point. This is the last bus stop. Since there's nothing to carry over again. So after that, you just um, you balance. As in, you will add the diamond, Jerry. Right? So 100 plus 50 over 3 minus 50 over 3, you have 1 with 8.3. Add this, you have minus 3.3. You have 3.3, you have 0. You understand? So that's all for, for question 2. So example 3. Is, I deliberately choose these three questions. They are different. The first one is, the end is fixed. The second question, the end is a roller and the third question the end is a cantilever you understand so these three questions are the most important um question i mean this beam that i'm giving you this one two three if you know these three you can undo anything <coughs> because it's either you have it as fixed you have it as free or you have it as ruler or inch ruler and inch they are the same thing i mean the analysis they are the same thing so you grab uh, so we've done the one for when the last end is fixed we've done another one when the last end is what a ruler now we are now dealing with cantilever show you grab uh -huh. so this is the last question <coughs> so here e is constant so you don't need to worry about i unlike the first one so the first step is to do what fix the moment so what's the fix the moment here mm, zero there's no load on this pan b is also what is zero so bc that would be w square over 12 so BC is W square over 12, CB that's minus W square over 12. So CD, now look at it. CD, CD will give us 30 times 4. You know how to do the um, analysis. When this point is um, fixed and this place is um, free, so you have to do it like in normal analysis, something like this. I bet I Straight, straight, straight. Oh, it's not straight. Okay, so this is your P here, yeah. Sir. Which is 30 for this point. So if you now want to calculate the moment at this point, you know there will be a moment at this point. This point, there will be a moment at this point. So that moment is what? C D. <coughs> you understand? So that's the fixed end moment for that point, which is what? Fixed end moment C D. So that's 30. You know, the length here is 40. Ah, it's 4 meter, 4 meter. So when you do the moment, say 30 times 4. So that will give you the moment at this point. You understand? But moment at this point because what? Zero. Show you grab. It's just this point is just like um when you take moment, summation of moment at this point is equal to zero. Summation at this point is zero. But summation at this point will not be equal to zero because it's fixed. Show you grab. 
So that is why we have FEMCD, FEMCD to be equal to 120, but FEMDC is equal to zero, free end. So that's, that's that. Okay, now, so now that we are done with the fixed domain, the next thing is what? Calculate the stiffness. <coughs> and I told you when you want to calculate stiffness, you don't stand at the end, you go inside. When you are, when you are not inside, you will not be looking at it from outside. Okay, so you have KBA, you will not say KAB. Because you are saying KB, you can get confused. And if you are very sure of yourself, you can be looking at it from inside. But it's better to come inside, you will not be looking at it from inside. So KBA, you have. um. 1 over L because fixed the far end is what fixed so it is what 1 over L since EI is constant so you can just say 1 over L if EI is not constant you can see if E is constant but I is not constant you can say I over L but if EI is constant you can just say 1 over L I believe you know what I'm talking about so KBA is got 1 over L and our L is 6 5 KBC find is what find is roller Find is not fixed. You don't get it confused. You know the other side, the other time. I told you that um see if it is continuous. I told you that if it is continuous, you'll be treating it as um pin. As um fixed, sorry. But this cantilever is different. This pan is a useless pan. Don't even think about it. It is useless. All this point from all this point like this, the moment there is zero. So <coughs> it is this point that is like our last end, like our last end. So be considering this as your last end. There is there's no continuity to it. You understand? There's no continuity to it. The moment at this point is zero, everything here is zero. Share your grab. So there's no continuity. To it. So you just stop at here. So you'll be seeing this as roller. You will not be seeing it as what? As um, a continuous um, beam. So you don't treat it as fixed. You treat it as what? As a roller. That is the end for cantilever. So you grab. So the KBC would have because it was 3 over 4 L. Because it is not because the far end is what? Inched or ruler. So blah blah blah, you have 1 over 12. Alright? This is factor. Apply the formula 2 over 3. Just see 1 minus that one. So you have 1 minus 2 over 3. That will give you 1 over 3, Abby. So now let's distribute it. <coughs> you know, as I've told you. You'll be seeing this as your last support. Forget about this. You can see that I did not even do anything to it. I just included it. So yeah, you can it, but mm -mm. you see the moment is zero, everything is zero. It's like that. Show you grab. Because this is um on you know on the knobs. This point is not uh, it's not a joint. It's not a joint, there's no support there. So you know you just can't take moment from anywhere. Show you grab. You know you can't say moment at this point. No, you can't see moment at um, this point. You can't see moment at this point. No, you understand? So you don't just you can just say moment at this support, moment at this support, moment at this support. Show you grab. Uh -huh. So that's why. Unless if you want to do the, unless if you want to just know the maximum moment of that point. Show you grab. Uh -huh. Unless you want to know the moment at that point. No. Edit it, eh? mm. <coughs> So this point is um this 30 kilonewton point, you just ignore it. We'll be working with this again alone. It's easy to deal with that one. You can do it with um even normal static um whatsoever. You lay your nipple, I just undo it from the right. You're able to solve this one, then you'll be left with this side. So, this side that we are left with is what we want to calculate now. So, the distribution factor for this point is zero. We know you are selfish, you don't have a distribution factor. We know. So, this B, 2 over 3, 1 over 3, this is what? 1. 1. It is 1. So, so the fixed end moment for this point, the fixed end moment for this point is zero. For this point, minus 45. BC, you have minus 20.5. CB, you have minus. What am I interpreting? Fixed moment 
at A is 0, fixed end moment at B A 0, fixed end moment B C 67.5, C B minus 75.5, then C D you have 120. C D, not another C D. I hope you are not thinking of another C D. Uh -huh. So after the fixed end moment, you now balance. So how to balance straight this time multiplied by the swing factor that will give us zero because the fixed element is even zero. So even if you change the sign of zero, zero none. So here is zero plus sixty-seven point five. You have sixty-seven point five. Change the sign. You have minus sixty-seven point five multiplied by two over three. You have minus forty-five. Minus sixty-seven point five multiplied by one over three. You have minus twenty-two point five. Also here, minus sixty-seven point five. Plus 120, you have 52.5. Change the sign, you have minus 52.5. Minus 52.5 times 1, you have minus 52.5. <sighs> okay. So now the next thing to now do is what? You carry over. So here you can carry to fixed, of course. So carry to fixed, divide by 2. Okay. Here, you know, I told you you'll be treating this place as ruler. Don't treat it as a continuous. Um, as a continuous beam so it will be a ruler and you don't carry to ruler or can you carry to ruler it will not take any more from you so you have to carry over uh, it's zero to it but it can give so 52.5 you give half of itself so that will be minus 26.5 so that's all you have to balance again you have zero when you balance this g zero minus 26.5 you have minus 26.5 change the sign you have 26.5 Multiply it by the distribution factors, you have this and this. When you balance this as well, you have zero. So, do the carrying over, carry over half of this, blah. This cannot carry, it can only carry zero. I mean, it cannot carry anything. So, you have zero here. It can carry over, but it has no value to carry over. So, you grab, you know, it can give this, but since it is left with zero. So, connector is other than to give zero, so it gives zero here. So, that's all. Then you balance. So, when you balance this, you have zero. Your all you have here is zero. So, when you balance zero, you have zero. Here is zero. So, that's the last end. So, there's no no other thing you can do here other than to just, just do what, just balance it. So, add everything minus 25 plus 8.75, you have minus 13.75. Minus 45 plus 17.5, you have minus 27.5. Add all this blah 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 blah, you have 27.5. This minus this blah, 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 blah you have minus 20. And from the beginning, you know this is 120. So 120 plus 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 120. So you just have to know that this and this will give you 0. This and this will give you 0. At this point, nobody's even concerned about it. So let's just write 0 and forget about it. So have a nice day. Have you have a nice time? See, that's your